find a piece of wood furniture that needs a little love or simply want to do DIY a new shelf or photo frame, it can be really tempting to just fork over the cash for stripper, sandpaper, and varnish to make your next project. But wait, because our next guest says there are some things you need to consider first before you decide to refinish. Cassie Beach is an interior stylist and blogger who has plenty of experience with this and she's here to show us how it's done and how to avoid some of the most common mistakes people make when they are refinishing wood. This is such a great idea because if you don't know how to do it, you're just gonna go buy a new piece. Yep. Why do that when you have a perfectly good item? Yes. So let's just talk first. I just wanna get right into this, but what do you need to make this happen? So first, I'm using the General Finishes gel stain, and okay. this is the only stain that can actually go over pre-finished sealed wood. So okay. it saves you the step of actually having to sand and strip off the, the poly or strip off any existing stain. Okay. Um, I like to use these shop cloths because they don't have the lint for wiping them off and then a foam brush, I, a pair of gloves, and if you're doing this real in depth, maybe a long sleeve, because otherwise I have got stain on my arms before as well. Okay. And then a clear coat of some sort. So there's poly or general finishes does have their own. Okay. Um, and this general finishes you can get online on Amazon. Otherwise, Stan Houston here in town does carry it as well. There's a number of colors and finishes. Okay, well let's get started. What is the first step? Should so put the, these gloves on? Yep, we'll put gloves on. Um, if you had any pieces that had any um, rough spots or anything like that where the finish is a little bit um, damaged, you could sand it if needed. Just lightly sand. I would do like 100, 120 grit sandpaper. But otherwise, that's the beauty of using this product is you don't need to sand necessarily. I did have a table that had um, like water spots or spots from like a paper plate. I would sand that spot a little bit more just so it takes the color. So right now we're looking at step one, which is clean piece of wood. Did you have to actually clean the piece or is this just? Yep, so I would wipe it down real real well with like some water. And then on this particular piece, that's where those white spots, I sanded those really well just to make sure they'd take in the color because they need it more than the other piece. So that would be step two. Yep. Lightly sand and wipe off the dust. Okay. Yep. Yep. And so that's basically if it's just like bumpy anywhere or has those spots. Any imperfections. Yep, okay, so exactly. once we have it cleaned, sand it if needed, third step. We got our gloves on. Yep, put your gloves, get all of your supplies ready, have extra towels handy so you're not traipsing through the house with, okay. with stain. And then what do we do after that? And then after that, you're ready to go. So you open your stain and you're ready. Um, I like using a foam brush to get it on. And this stain is unique because it doesn't absorb into the wood like a typical stain. It actually is more like a translucent, translucent layer that goes over. So I like to do a nice thick layer on top and kind of let that sit and cure a little bit and then just wipe off the excess. But it does work a little bit different than a traditional stain you're using on raw wood. So you're taking the brush and you're going the same way with it. Yes, always, anytime you're working with wood, you always wanna go with the grain of the wood. Okay. Um, and just be mindful of that. So, then, so then you take the wipe for excess? Yep, and then you take, take this and just kind of go back and forth. It's very forgiving. Um, and you can kind of see how it's just a little bit darker. And you, this is one that you're gonna layer because it is a translucent stain. You may need, you know, on this piece, this is quite a bit lighter than that table I did. Right. So you may need four or five coats and that's why it does get a little tacky or sticky. You just wanna let it dry in between layers, but just keep working with it that way. And then working the stain into the wood. And you're actually like completely wiping it. Yep, okay. yep, exactly. So exactly. I'm gonna try it now. Give it a shot. So when you're using this stain, yes. I mean, what if I want to turn my wood like a gray? We're seeing a lot of that or mm -hmm. white. Can yes. you do that? Yes, they have all sorts of colors in this stain. This particular one is an antique walnut. Um, I know Java is a very popular color. It's like a dark, dark color okay. as well, but they have a ton of different options. So if I wanted to actually get this color, mm -hmm. is that possible with doing multiple coats of it? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so I'm kind of getting it to... There, and then after that, then I wipe? Yes. Okay. Yep, perfect. So I take my wipe, and I just kind of rub it? Yeah. Okay, so let's say we have the whole entire thing done. What do you do after that? I would let it cure for a good 24 hours, okay. and then you would just take um, another foam brush and take okay. a clear finish, like a poly, and put it on top. 
if it is a table or something that's going to have a lot of contact, a coffee table, somewhere where you're going to put food, drinks, anything like that, I would do a two, a two, three, four, five coats. If it's a table, I would do closer to like that five coats. Okay. Just because this does sit a layer on top of the wood compared to other stains. So if you were to nick it or something like that, that way you're nicking that poly and you're not nicking the stain color. Okay, are there different types of poly? Like, can we get a matte look or a more yes. glossy look? I tend to lean towards matte. Um, it's going to hide. This one is actually satin, and I think this one's this one's satin. But I do have a matte one that I like at home. The shinier the gloss, the more you're going to see imperfections or dents in the wood. Okay, so what are some other things that you've refinished? Um, tables, uh, picture frames, shelves, basically any wood. I love to go antiquing. So anything that has wood on it, this kind of opens up all the options to be able to change the color. Yeah, the table was like super dark, got rid of yes. all of those marks. Yes, exactly, exactly. But why do we want to use this rather than just taking paint? I know in college, my roommates and I just painted yes. a table with like white paint. Um, if you talk to anyone that's older, especially with the antiques, they kind of cringe if you take a paintbrush towards... Um, the natural wood or old antiqued wood because once you put paint on a piece It's really hard to get it off of all the crevices So that would be one reason and then the advantage to this is not having the traditional stripping process where you put a lot of chemicals on to actually strip it okay. um, so I would say this is a huge advantage of that and Being able to have the natural rustic side of things so. So after we do the last step of putting the poly over I mean how long should you let this sit before you do anything with it? Again, at least 24 hours if you can wait longer, especially on a table or something like that. Um, I've heard up to 30 days it can take for a paint to actually fully cure or a poly or anything like that. So the longer you wait, the less likely you are to dent it or ding it before it's cured and hardened. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cassie. I learned a lot today. I don't need to just go buy a new piece of furniture. I can upholster it, I guess is what you could call it. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you.